totally Namaskar, I'm Harpreet Kaur and I welcome you all to our live and interactive session on integration of virtual labs in teaching learning. Well, it's an online training session which is conducted by Central Institute of Educational Technology that is CIET and CERT New Delhi. You are watching this live and interactive session on our eVidya channels from 6 to 12 and also on our YouTube channel NCERT official. Well, we would like to inform you about this training session that is an online training session which is a 5 day, 5 hour training session. Well, each day, 1 hour between 4 and 5 pm is dedicated to this online webinar series or training session and every day we come up with different themes, with different resource persons and of course with different topics, with different explanations and demonstrations. And since we are having this uh, training session under the umbrella concept of integration of virtual labs in teaching learning, today is day 3 of this training session. On day 1, we had the theme virtual labs, policy perspectives, need and scope. On day 2, we had the theme virtual lab as a learning tool and today is day 3 and today we are going to have the theme integration of virtual labs in teaching learning of mathematics. Now I have already told you it is a training session which is open for all. You all can definitely attend it and please pay very close attention to this session because at the end of the training session and that uh, means on the fifth day we will be having a quiz. You can attempt the quiz and if you score more than 70 percent you will be given a participation certificate. Now how to register yourself for the quiz, how to attempt the quiz, what are the norms, I will tell you each and everything about the same at the end of today's training session. We will go to the website, I will tell you how to browse, how to reach to the particular point and what are the links that you need to click in order to attempt the quiz. But make sure that you attend all the day's session very carefully because if you want to answer all the questions correctly, these training sessions, you know, need to be attended very, very thoughtfully. And uh, I have already mentioned, it's a live and interactive, which means you can ask your questions during the training session. And uh, if not during the training session, you can always write to us through email, you can uh, type your question on a YouTube channel of ours and you can connect with us. I will tell you all the ways but before that let me introduce you all to our experts of today. We are joined by Miss Anna Gupta. She is Academy Consultant from CIET and CERT Delhi. Welcome to the session ma'am. Namaste. Namaste. And we are also joined by Dr. Praveen Kumar Chaurasia, his professor in mathematics from RIE Ajmer. Welcome to the session, sir. Ji. So, viewers, learners, students, these are our two experts who are going to talk about the theme today, who will demonstrate uh, some of the tools to you today. And if you want to connect with them, please call us on this telephone number which is flashing on your screen. This is double eight double zero double four zero double five nine this is the phone number and if you want to write to us we have a separate email id for you which is training.helpdesk at ciet.nic.in and i've already mentioned that you're watching us live on our youtube channel ncert official and that means that you can always go to the live chat box or comment section just type your question there in case you have any feedback or suggestion for us, you can also type the same and reach out to us. So let's now move ahead in the training session and uh, you know I have this very first question to Dr. Praveen Kumar sir, um, before I actually start this question and answer round, please give us a brief of what all we are going to discuss today on day 3 of this training session where we are having the theme of 
integration of virtual labs in teaching learning of mathematics. So please share the brief of the session with us. Thank you, Harpreet. In fact, uh, today what we have planned, we will yes. be discussing about the basics of the mathematics learning. Mm -hmm. If we, as a subject mathematics, Gee. what are the basic thing we, we can take, in, we can take care about that so that the learning of mathematics should be very easy and very important for us. Right, sir. The thing is that we will be also talking about the concept of mathematics lab. Hmm. Why mathematics lab is very important in the teaching learning process of mathematics. Right, and sir. at the same time, the utility of virtual lab in the form of mathematical activities. Mm -hmm. It is also quite handy, quite important for us. And if we use the pedagogical importance of, if you can understand the pedagogical importance of virtual lab mm -hmm. for the mathematics, mathematics activities, definitely it will be very, uh, I mean, it will be very good, very important for the teaching learning process of mathematics for mm -hmm. the student also and for the teachers also. Right, so our sir. plan for today is this one. Right, sir. Thank you so much for sharing the brief with us. And we all understand that mathematics is such an interesting subject. And to make it even more interesting for the students with the help of teaching learning aid, using ICT is a wonderful initiative. So, sir, my first question to you regarding uh, the same context is, what according to you are the basic principles of methods of teaching mathematics? Yeah. Actually, if we talk, I, I'm not going into the details of the educational theoretical things regarding that, mm -hmm. but I will be talking from the practicing point of view. Right, sir. So if we are teaching, if you are in the, in the business of teaching learning of mathematics, what are the main points we should take care about that? Mm -hmm. So I would like to highlight my, my PPT here. Yes. And uh, basically, the first thing, the first point I have taken here, the basic principles of methods of teaching mathematics. Hmm. I am not talking about any hardcore theory about here, but my concern is just about the practices. Hmm. What type of practices, how, which, which, uh, I mean, in the teaching learning process, what are the points uh, we should be, we should highlight so that uh, it, it could be taken care during the teaching learning process. Right, sir. The first thing is that, the first thing is that, Definitely, uh, in a school curriculum, mathematics has uh, has its own importance, mm -hmm. and everyone knows about that because its role in other subject areas like science and even in the social science also. The mathematics has a vast uh, role in so many subjects. Yes. Uh, subjects and and the, the thing, the mental ability, the mental skills, the students gain during the teaching learning process of the mathematics. It is quite quite important, and it can be used. It, it is being used in other subject areas also. Hmm. Whatever the analysis power, whatever the whatever the creativity uh, power the students are gaining during the teaching learning of mathematics, it is very. Uh, I mean, it is a very important skills for the students, and it is very helpful in uh, gaining the subject knowledge of uh, the other subjects also. Right, sir. So that's why teaching learning mathematics uh, mathematics has a quite. Uh, I mean, it, its role is very important in the school curriculum. Hmm. And the other thing is that traditional mathematics teaching has been found to be unsatisfactory because hmm. actually earlier what, what happened, we were only focused, uh, I mean, the few, uh, the, around the few decades ago, we were only focused about the results, results in the mathematics. What are the results? What are the theorems? What are the, and about how we are going to prove about it that so we some somewhere we were missing the creativity yes creativity of the mathematics the the i mean the beautiful things which is which is inherited in the mathematics concept we were lacking we are we were lacking behind lacking behind that hmm. and now in in the I, I, as per the nep 2020 and whatever the ncf we have prepared uh, ncrt has prepared the ncf the things has been changed a lot yes and we are talking about the the subject should be should be i mean the, the five uh, there are so many skills we are talking about and during the teaching learning process of the mathematics these skills should be taken care hmm. so and uh, the demand uh, so the clearly the demands made on, uh, made on the mathematics teacher are, uh, are almost unlimited at the moment the teachers must have a specialized understanding of the foundation of mathematical thinking and learning. That is the main thing required at the moment that the 
द फाउंडेशन ऑफ मैथमेटिकल थिंकिंग दैट शुड बी दैट शुड बी टेकन केयर बाय द टीचर ड्यूरिंग द टीचिंग लर्निंग प्रोसेस शी शुड ऑल्सो प्रोसेस द स्किल्स टू पुट टूगेदर द होल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स इन द माइंड ऑफ हर स्टूडेंट्स लाइक ए मास्टर टेक्नीशियन सी शुड डिसाइड वट काइंड ऑफ लर्निंग इज वर्थ एंड रियलाइज दैट मेक यूज ऑफ मोटिवेशन एंड इंडिविजुअल डिफरेंस इन लर्निंग सो द मेक यूज ऑफ द मोटिवेशन वट एवर द कंसेप्ट यू आर गोइंग टू डील विथ यू हैव टू मोटिवेट योर स्टूडेंट्स फर्स्ट यस आई मीन हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू मोटिवेट अबाउट द कंसेप्ट वंस द स्टूडेंट्स विल बी मोटिवेटेड अबाउट द कंसेप्ट देन assimilation of the concept is quite easy hmm. if if the interest has not been generated due, uh, about the concept definitely it will be very hard for the students to consume to accept the uh, thinking the the concept behind that uh, i mean the mathematical process behind that ma- concept so that's why to, you have to generate the interest interest before right you have to first generate the interest of the student about any concept yes so she should be able to translate basically whatever the trainings we are discussing here that you should uh, you should uh, generate the interest about the concept hmm. you have to involve uh, i i'll in in, in uh, further uh, further slides i will be talking about some other uh, deep points regarding the teaching learning of mathematics so all these these things whatever the things uh, the teacher we are discussing with the teacher this should come into the practice she should plan or design the instruction so that individualized discovery oriented hmm. each student should have the opportunity to discover something or problem solving it, such type of learning is very i mean uh, it is it is important so that uh, the each student of the classroom should have some approach of the discovery and that's why mathematical mathematics lab the mathematical activities it has a quite important role in the teaching learning of mathematics so the basic principle here i would like to recommend that generate the mathematical activities explore the mathematical activities hmm. in every concept and once you will you will be able to generate the interest of the students through the mathematical activities definitely student will be involved with you a student will be involved in the mathematics and she will she will generate the 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 critical thinking about that concept she will be able to develop other skills which we are talking about creativity which mm-hmm. we are talking about the problem solving such type of skills will be generated among the students so this is the answer of your first question at the moment yes sir you're absolutely right because mathematics is not just about solving the numericals you know it also develops a lot more other things in students as you said uh, critical uh, analysis uh, you know uh, is something that can be taught through mathematics and it's a very logical uh, subject and generation of interest is very important because unless and until students are involved their interest is generated and mathematics is taught in such a manner you know they won't be able to follow their passion uh, when they go for the higher studies in this particular subject now this leads me to another question of mine which is all about the principles of child development and learning basically this is quite important that uh, the the principles which is uh, which is uh, highlighting the child development and mm-hmm. learning at the moment it is it is quite important with the learning of mathematics itself yes let me let me let me give some details about that mm-hmm. the so the first question i would like to ask that how does one teach most effectively mm-hmm. this is question for everybody how does one teach most effectively and its answer is quite easy you can mm-hmm. see here very simple teach the child in the way he learns best yes this is the answer you have to get the the i mean the way of the child how she is going to learn how she learns what type of concepts she accept what type of things what are what type of discussion is not fruitful for her i mean what whatever the whatever the whatever the things related to her learning style hmm. once teacher will be accessed i mean when the t- teacher get the idea about that the child is able to learn in such a way then definitely the student will get the best of 
based from the teacher itself. Yes. Therefore, it is necessary that the teacher understands how a child learns mm -hmm. and the factors which affect learning. The teacher has to understand the way in which growth and development affect learning. Basically, student, uh, childs are uh, day by day they are getting age, yes. they are growing, their their mental growth is also there. So one has to understand if the if the if the child is developing in the uh, in 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 his age and the at the same time mental development is also there. So how this type of the, uh, development is affecting the learning process? So one has to understand this, and I will be I will be talking about this. A child learns best when he is clear about the purpose or goals to be achieved. Means if your goal, if she she will clear about the goal, what she has to gain from all such type of activities or discussion, then she will definitely she will learn in the best way. Hmm. It is better if she is guided by a self-selected goal. I mean, if you are providing so many opportunities to the student and she is accepting, she is choosing. one of the one of the uh, one of the process for, to achieve that goal by herself then that will be most effective and this can be done with the help of so with the with by providing so many activities there in the mathematics lab uh, even from if you are in the virtual virtual lab for the mathematical activities there there are the resources which resources can be used by the students and uh, the process can be completed for the learning the purpose determines what he learns and the degree to which he learns children grow physically mentally and socially at different times and with different growth rates various growth curves giving data about heights weights age intelligence and interest or aptitude or aptitude inventories which apply to children of a given age group are available i mean if you want to go in the deep of the and this child development and learning there are so many data available and one can see about that however deviations are observed many a time in a given group of children and this is not a uniform rule because the background of the child the environment of the child everything affect the style of learning of the child so therefore there are deviations about that the the main thing here i would like to i would like to tell about that one very important studies of the jean piaget he has he has talk about the child's mental mental growth and he told that it is a continuous process from birth the child's mental mental growth is a continuous process and his thought process are by no means those of an adult it means if on a topic or on a on an on an issue a adult has a thinking so mm. definitely a child a child does not have the same style of thinking about any situation yes one has to understand that the the thinking style of adult and thinking style of children are quite quite different and you have to accept that right child is thinking about that situation or that uh, mathematical situation hmm so the thing is that uh, jean piaget has talk about some cognitive development stages mm -hmm. and this is just related to the mathematical concept teaching learning of mathematics itself he was talking about there are th he is talking about three stages that is one is the sensory motor operations the second is the concrete thinking operations and the third one is the formal thinking operation why this is connected with the mathematics basically just basically the sensory motor operation is that it the when a child getting up to age of 3 or 4 years he is in the in this sensory motor operations he is getting the senses his sensors are being generated he is getting what is hot what is cool and what is low what is uh, up uh, what is below such type of sensors uh, is generating inside the um, uh, during the mental growth of the children the second important thing is that the concrete thinking operations hmm. the concrete thinking operation is talking about that uh, if you have to tell you have to uh, give some understanding to the children hmm. then definitely the student should able to feel she should be able to touch about the thing the in the concrete format 
then only the student will able to understand the basics of that uh, mathematical concept so the thing is that mathematics is an abstract subject hmm. and the thing is that the the, the mental growth of the the mental growth the, the the subject about the mental growth is talking about the up to the age of 13 or 14 years the students are in the format of the concrete thinking operations so how this will be matched the mathematics is abstract abstract and the as a nature of the subject mathematics is an abstract subject because even even if you are taking a symbol one hmm. you are knowing that this one is representing one concrete object then that's why you are able to understand that this symbol one is nothing but it is it's a representation of one concrete object right. and you are taking this as a number one but even if I, I i i give you a symbol of greek symbol in greek of uh, in greek 50 you will be not able to recognize it so what i i mean to say that even the symbols the numerals these are the abstract things so mathematics is completely abstract thing Hmm. And the, the the mental status of the child, children is in the concrete thinking mode. How how you are going to match this one? Hmm. This is a challenge for teaching and learning mathematics. So the thing is that your mathematics should be concretized then. Once you you are able to concretize your mathematics, then only it will be in the status of the children children's learning style, and then only students will be able to grasp the concept very very nicely and to how you are going to concrete the mathematical concept that is very important you have to come up with lots of activities you should use the i mean this uh, mathematical activities now virtual lab in mathematics it is a quite important utility at the moment if uh, the student can use such type of activities and it is just as as simple as you are providing the concrete experience to the students and it will be in the tune of the student's learning style and once the student uh, students are integrating with the virtual lab definitely they will get the basics and they will uh, they will get the basics and they will learn the math mathematical concept because the things will come in the learning style is style of the students as they are in the concrete thinking operational mode at the moment hmm. and after 14 or 15 years the students are coming in the form of formal thinking operations and at that time the mathematics abstraction of the mathematics can be handled by the students because their mental growth is also up to the up to that level is they can take the things in the abstract manner also right but the thing is that the during the schooling schooling age up to the 9 10th the main schooling is the students are in the concrete thinking operations so mathematics has to be concretized and this has the mathematics could be concretized only you are able to provide lots of mathematical activities and to, uh, through the math cons uh, through the mathematics lab or through the virtual lab and once the students will be able to explore the mathematical activities of different concept the things will come as per the mental level of the students mental development stage of the students and they will be able to digest the concept okay so now uh, basically uh, uh, i will take four five minutes more for sure, the sir. theoretical part portion yes, after sir. that i would like to ask my colleague ana uh, miss ana gupta here she will give the demonstration of few of the mathematical activities which we have on the Diksha portal at the moment. <coughs> so basically I, I already I have discussed about that so uh, basically I will just now this is one one more, more one more important thing which I would like to tell here that that uh, the a closer examination of the vast literature on mathematics learning reveals mainly four labels are steps of learning what are what are those four labels are steps of learning hmm. that is quite uh, interesting also right sir. Uh, mathematics learning is related to first readiness mm -hmm. readiness means you have to prepare your student to accept the concept right you sir. have to generate the interest for the concept so the student will be, would be ready for the concept and the first important step is readiness so and uh, the, the yeah. mathematical lab mathematics lab yeah the they, they activities play a, certainly even in the virtual lab activities this could generate the uh, interest among the students and the student could be ready for the 
concept here itself. Okay. Then it is coming to the experimentation. Experimentation can be done with the help of experimentation can be done with the help of uh, this uh, virtual activities in the in the labs itself, virtual labs, even in the uh, mathematics lab itself. Just virtual lab is to assist you if you don't have. Uh, I mean, a very nice uh, mathematics mathematics lab at the moment. You can take the help of virtual lab, and virtual lab is just to assist the uh, the uh, concrete mathematics lab itself. Then after the experimentation, you have to verbalize what you have done. Hmm. What whatever the experience you have got during the activities, this you have to verbalize or symbolize. The mathematics is I mean, whatever the activities you have performed. whatever the uh, i mean the concept you have discussed about that in the experimentation during the mathematical activities you have to give a verbal explanation about the about your activity right and then coming on to the systematic generalization once the, the fourth stage is the systematic generalization that once the student is able to understand the entire process she will be able to generalize the thing what she has done in a particular thing and that could be a general and in the general case what could be the result and uh, forming of result can be done just with the help of systematic generalization right so this is uh, this is quite important in teaching and learning of mathematics hmm. so the necessary condition leading to the acquisition of new responses are new responses which she is getting from the uh, activities the real situation first hand experience with concrete things are virtual Uh, activities in the virtual lab intuition exploration discovery through investigation hmm. formulation verbal or symbolic representation based on logical reasoning and finally assimilation classification generalization or concept formation through thinking and reasoning okay new concepts are developed as an extension of previous learning the process of learning as well as the product should be emphasized hmm Okay, so now uh, yes, sir. So since you have explained us very I think nicely, I think I have uh, yes, I have uh, explained whatever that you have asked the questions yes, to sir. me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And now we can move further in a very elaborate manner. And sir, I think you are mute. You your mic is mute. Oh, uh, I uh, okay, sir. Repeat, can you are mute. Okay, sir. Can you hear me your now? Your audio is not coming. I think not hearing it. Sir, can you hear me now? Yeah, I will request my technical team. Please, uh, you need to look after the audio. So, can you hear me now? Harpreet, your your mic is mute. Uh, okay, so uh, just a second, sir. I'm coordinating with my technical team. Sir, आप बोलिए sir. Uh, can you hear us now? Am I audible? So, please say something. Okay, so sir, we have uh, learned about uh, in an elaborated way, you know, about the principles of child development uh, learning. There is a lot of theory behind the same which you have explained. I am not getting your voice. Will you please check the? Uh, there is some technical plunge uh, because uh, I am getting your. You are mute. Your uh, okay. your mic is mute. Okay, I uh, okay. I I am requesting. I am not my, getting your voice. Uh, sure, sir. I am requesting my technical team to look into the matter and. Uh, Viewers, I believe that you know you are following this up, and we are receiving a lot of questions on our YouTube channel as well. And we will take these questions uh, once you know, sir, is through with his presentation. Sir, am I audible to you now? So uh, now I would like to uh, Anna. Anna can demonstrate few of the activities, yes. and during the activities, we can discuss about the pedag pedagogical concepts. if you are performing any activities in the virtual mode i mean if you are in the virtual lab and we are performing the mathematical activities there what type of questions we should ask from the pedagogy point of view hmm. so that the basics the the i mean the deep sense of the that activity should be should uh, should be realized by the students hmm. so this is the, at the moment i would like to Right. Uh, I would like to prefer that Anna should uh, some. Uh, I mean, some she should demonstrate few of the activities of the mathematics lab yes. in the virtual mode. Yes, thank you, sir. Definitely. And now we will see that the use of virtual labs that will provide an opportunity for the students and the teacher, basically, to understand and analyze the uh, mathematical concepts through various different situations. 
So now we can see that with the help of virtual labs, students and teachers can verify or discover various geometrical properties and algebraical facts uh, with the help of technology. Mm -hmm. And we can also see that student will be able to generalize and solve the problem by their own. So now we will discuss what will we experience in virtual labs. For this, I will present my presentation. Okay. So what will we uh, experience in virtual labs? So we are uh, having the resources that are available on virtual labs for Diksha to enhance your learning experience. So first we will discuss in all uh, experiments we are having a theory and procedure part. It will give the provide, it will uh, provide the information of the concept related to the experiment. So we, uh, we will get all the details of the related terms that particular topic we will get all information in theory and procedure. So in animation and video, it will be helpful in visualizing the theoretical concepts. If the student want to visualize the concept, they, uh, they can easily uh, go through the animation and the video part. Then we have a simulation. For simulation, they can easily provide the real time experience of performing the experiments. So now, okay. Yeah. We can go ahead with the demonstrations. Yes. Right. So, okay. So now I am going to the uh, for the demonstration. For this, you have to go to just uh, type Diksha. You have to just type Diksha. Then we will get the home page of this Diksha. Yes. So when you scroll down, we have some verticals of Diksha. You can see that these are the verticals: Bhasha, Sangam, Jadui, Pitara. Then next we have a vertical which is related to the virtual labs. Okay, next we have a vertical which is virtual labs. So here we have a description about the virtual labs. What, uh, what are the virtual labs? This is basically for the teaching learning of science and mathematics, mm -hmm. which are very helpful in uh, other subjects also. So when you scroll down, you can see that we have a virtual labs for mathematics from class 6 to 12th. So when we explore, when we click on explore button, then we will get the information in Hindi medium and English medium. But right now it is available for English medium. Yeah. So we will click on mathematics. So now we have a class 6 experiments. In class 6 experiment, basically in, uh, we are focusing on algebraic concept. So one of the concept uh, which is uh, related in class uh, 6, which is uh, sum of the fractions with the same denominators. So this topic is basically uh, very confusing for the uh, students uh, to get the uh, knowledge about what are the fractions and how we can add the fractions with the same denominators. But with the help of virtual labs, they can easily relate how we can add the fractions with the same denominators and with the different denominators. So for this uh, activity, we have an objective how to find the uh, sum of the fractions with the same denominators. For this uh, previous knowledge, what we require, the student should know the concept of uh, natural numbers and the fractions. They should know how we add the natural numbers and the uh, whole numbers. Then we have uh, information about what is fraction and the parts of a fraction. And they can also relate uh, what are the like fractions and what are the unlike fractions. Then we will uh, have a information about what steps we have to follow for addition of like fractions. So next we have a tab for uh, virtual labs. This tab is related to the procedure. The procedure the student are follows in the classroom and the same procedure they have to follow uh, in the simulation. Okay. So uh, when we scroll down, the first step uh, we have to create a grid, and the grid uh, is uh, uh, selected by the student. They can give, uh, they can take any value, and they can uh, also solve for the various values. So if I uh, if I am talking about a five into five grid, they can take a five uh, uh, five uh, boxes in in length and the five boxes in breadth. Then we have a five into five grid. That is twenty five boxes are here. So uh, for the next fraction, they can also take a next grid and then after that they can add the fractions. So this is a small uh, procedure which is uh, we will follow in the simulation also. So uh, next tab, uh, in the next tab we have an animation. In animation we have a, a video, a short video which is related to the simulation that what steps we have to follow in the simulation. All the all uh, steps are uh, uh, followed in this short video. 
Next we have a simulator which is the highlighter of the virtual labs. So addition of like fractions. So first we can see that what is the objective of this activity. So objective of this activity is sum of the fractions with the same denominator and what learning outcome the student will get. They will learn uh, about the addition of fractions with the same denominators. So how they can perform with the help of virtual labs because in the classroom the teacher used to only say that you have to just add the like fractions and then we mm -hmm. will get the addition of fractions. Yes. But in the virtual labs how we can explain that what is the major part of this fractions. So objective is to find some of the uh, fractions with the same denominator so we will click on that. Hmm. Then what we are going to learn these learning outcomes are also here and the steps is also fine. We are going to learn the addition of fractions having the same denominators. For this we will be able to calculate the addition the following steps need to be taken. For the creation of the grid what we have to do we need a value so the student uh, can own uh, take the va different values and they can calculate for the different uh, fractions. So this grid represent the denominator of both the fraction as they are like fractions. So we will select the different pen for the first fraction and the second fraction. So we will click on OK. So in this activity we can say that uh, this is the addition of like fractions. So for the creation of the grid the student will take the different values. So we are using the below value and enter the value which is uh, from 3 to 8. So student will take uh, different value. So I am taking uh, value 5. So this is and in the bottom you can also see that there is the instruction enter the value in the in input box and click on the OK button. So the student will click on OK. So you have entered the value 5. So what will happen? Click on the next button. So we are creating a grid of the same row and the column. So which will represent the denominator of both the fractions. So 5 into 5. So we have 25 cells of the grid created. So in this uh, click on the tools button and select the red sketch pen. So all the instructions are given here. Students can read the instructions and perform the activity by their own. Okay. So we have to click on tools. We have a red sketch pen. Now they can mark uh, their numerator value. In the numerator value will be depend uh, only on the uh, boxes they, they will show by the red pen. So I am taking uh, 2 plus signs then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So enter the selected number of boxes. So I have, uh, so I am selecting 7 boxes. Now enter the total number of boxes. So total number of boxes are 25. So now what will be the fraction? So calculate the fraction. Fraction represented by the red plus signs. So how many plus signs are there? 7. So it means a uh, fraction will be 7 by 25. Now next click on the next button. For the fraction 2 we will take the again 25 cells because we are talking about the same denominator. So we are taking same grid of cells. So for the fraction 2, click on the tools. Now we are selecting blue sketch pen and now we are taking another different value for the next fraction. So I am selecting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So enter the selected number of boxes. So I have selected 9 boxes and the total number of boxes are 25. So we get the notification that we are on the right path. So when we click on this, calculate the fraction. Now the fraction is 9 by 25. So next is what will we represent? You can see that the red plus signs are 7 and the blue plus signs are uh, uh, blue red plus signs are 8. So what we get now we have to calculate the resultant grid and what is the resultant grid we can see that one uh, student can easily calculate uh, they can uh, calculate the red plus signs and the blue plus signs then what we get we get the enter the number of plus and uh, red plus sign and blue plus symbol so we get 15 here right okay so this value is wrong so we have to add all the plus signs so we can calculate 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. So right value is 16. So I am entering 16. Okay. Now enter the total number of boxes. So total number of boxes were 25. Then what we get? We get the result here. Okay, so fraction represented by plus signs plus fractions represented by the blue plus signs. So 7 by 25 plus 9 by 25 that is 16 by 25. So this is the simulation part. In this simulation you can also see in the right hand side there is a menu also. Mm -hmm. In the menu we can also see the theoretical part related to the topic and then a procedure. The student followed in the classroom and the same uh, they, they will follow in the simulation. And then we have a Viva Voice. This is a short quiz for the students. They can solve the questions what they have learned uh, here. Hmm. So read all the instructions given below and the quiz will start by clicking on OK button. And how they can uh, play the qu uh, quiz? To select the option, they have to give the answer and for every correct answer, they will get plus one and for the, uh, there is no negative marking here. Right. So, I am clicking on OK. So, there is a question, the uh, students can uh, perform the questions and the teacher can evaluate uh, the students also. So, here we have a, a question like a pizza was divided into eight equal part slices and if uh, Ben ate five slices and Eric ate two slices, then what? part of the pizza that they eat all together so student can relate that five slices plus two slices so that means seven and the total part is eight hmm. so they can easily relate that the total of uh, they eat all together is seven by eight hmm. they can submit their responses and that's so, the correct response and that's the correct response so we have 10 questions here and there is a timer also and they score uh, value 1. Mm. So uh, once when they complete the activity, they will get the total score. So this is the uh, simulation and then we have a self-evaluation questions also. Teachers can give the question with the same experiment and then some reference books are also there if they want to explore uh, this topic uh, to uh, uh, further, then they can uh, refer these books also. Hmm. Then we have a feedback. This feedback is basically for the user. So hmm. user can be student or the teacher. So they can uh, give their uh, uh, responses and they can also give the suggestions. These suggestion, uh, suggestions will be uh, will uh, directly go to the uh, CDAC Mumbai who has created these virtual labs. So now this is for the uh, al uh, algebraic part. Now I am going to show you one uh, geometrical simulation. Okay, this is from class. Okay, now I am going to show one more simulation. Okay. So, this is quite interesting ma'am and you know I have received one question on our YouTube channel. This is Ms. Uh, Shamshad Alam and she says that uh, you know I am a teacher from a government aided school and what is the cheapest way to provide uh, these facilities to the students because it's you know looks very interesting. Teaching learning has become a uh, very easy and of course very easy to grasp also. So ma'am what is the best possible way to avail these facilities? Yes as we can see that Diksha is an online platform they mm -hmm. can also access offline also. So, okay. And these are all resources are open educational resources. They mm -hmm. can go th uh, through the uh, Diksha platform and they can explore all the mathematical experiments. And free they of can, cost. Yes, free of cost are there. And they can, so we have uh, here, uh, right now we have 36 mathematical experiments mm -hmm. and we are uh, also working for more experiments that right. they can explore in the classroom and they can also demonstrate, teacher can also demonstrate yes. the of students course. in the classroom. Yes. And uh, Dr. Praveen, I have a question for you uh, as well. We have got this uh, question on our YouTube channel uh, from Ms. Namita Sahu and she is asking about the factors, you know, that can be called as barriers to learning mathematics. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, the factors which is related to the, I mean, see, if we are just focusing on the result. Mm. That if you are going to add two fractions like uh, 2 by 5 and uh, uh, 7 by 5, we are going to add two such two fractions and we are just getting the answer. This is the answer of uh, adding up two fractions. Yes. That is not the learning of mathematics. True. That is, uh, you have 
you have left the entire beauty entire concept of the learning mathematics here hmm. in this uh, virtual lab activity we have we have uh, what, what type of things we have uh, presented here hmm. first of all what is 2 by 5 hmm. put 2 by 5 the a geometrical representation of 2 by 5 has been given there hmm. you are developing the visualization power of the student yes the mathematics in mathematics supports the students so that they can get the they can develop the visualization power right. i mean whatever the things is it is not coming directly to them but in the back of the mind hmm. they can visualize the geometry related to that concept yes. so that is the beauty once you are able to visualize what is the fraction 2 by 5 is representing so out of 5 you are taking two parts you have taken a whole you have given five parts of that whole and out of five parts five equal parts you have taken five equal parts of that whole and out of five equal parts you are taking two and then you are saying that this two part only this is representing the fact uh, fractions two by five hmm. so that is the biasness if you are not able to visual able to i mean if your student is not able to visualize the concept hmm. she is not able to learn the processes of the mathematics learning you are just focusing on the you are just focusing on the result part of that this is the result yes uh, the problem and this is the result so that's you have left the entire beauty of the le learning mathematics there so that is the business so always highlight the basic skills what is the mathematics offering the creativity the visualization the critical thinking the analysis power the problem solving skill such type such type of skill such type of beauty should evolve in the teaching learning or process of the mathematics if you are not focusing on you are just focusing on the result you are leaving all this beautiful concept of the mathematics there well i'm sure our viewer has got her answer thank you so much sir for your time for your contribution to this session we are absolutely delighted to have us you know to have you with us thank you so much and uh, we would also uh, like to thank uh, Anna Ma for her contribution to the session and how beautifully she demonstrated, you know, the use of these virtual labs and how to make uh, teaching learning of mathematics more interesting. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. And viewers, uh, that was the day three of our training session. Of course, the umbrella concept of integration of virtual labs in teaching learning. And day three was dedicated, of course, to integration of virtual labs in teaching learning of mathematics. And now, as I promised in the beginning of the session, I'll be telling you about the way to register yourself for the quiz, how to go to the website. So, let's uh, catch up on that. And uh, let me tell you uh, how you can reach uh, the website. So, this is our website of ciet.ncert.gov.in because CIET is conducting this training session. You have to go to the activities section, click on the same and go to this option of workshop and training. Click on the same. And when you will scroll down, you will see the program title and that is Integration of Virtual Labs in Teaching Learning. Well, this is the title of the webinar series, training series that we are conducting this week. So, click on the same. And here you will land up on this page where you will find all the schedule, detailed schedule of basically what we are doing this week. So, this is online training of on integration of virtual labs in teaching learning. This is the five day schedule with different themes and you will see here the objectives of the program or the training series that we are conducting. What the learners or the viewers are going to get from this particular training series is what we have mentioned here. Here is the detailed program schedule with the name of the resource persons and the themes. You can go through the same. And we have already covered uh, three days. Now we are left with two more days. So you can see here on day four, we will be talking about integration of virtual labs in teaching learning of science. That's tomorrow. And on day five, we will be talking about integration of virtual labs in teaching learning of languages. So, you know, we have covered mathematics. Then we'll be talking about science and then languages. And now the most important part over here, how to particip participate. You need to register yourself. First, by clicking this link or scanning this QR code and then scroll down, watch all the live training sessions that we are conducting from 15th of January to 19th of January very carefully, very attentively. And then this is the post session assessment link or quiz link that will be highlighted on 19th of January. So, 
you can click on the same attempt the quiz if you score more than 70 percent you will get a certificate you can also download the certificate after some time from the website or allow us some time to send the same to your email ids and if you want to share your feedback with us so this is the link for the same click or on this particular link or scan this QR code and if you want to write to us you're always welcome to do that this is the email ID which we keep on mentioning during the entire training sessions of ours this is training.helpdesk at ciet.nic.in and you can call us on this number during the session you can speak uh, to our experts or uh, you can type your questions on our YouTube channel NCERT official so that is all about the training session that uh, we are conducting. So we are wrapping up day three training session today. Hope you have learned a lot from it. I have personally learned a lot and uh, have seen how with the help of virtual labs, you can actually make teaching and learning of mathematics simpler, easier, easily understandable and way more interesting. So uh, now it's uh, time for the wrap, but uh, let me tell you in a while you will watch another live and interactive session of ours called Sahiyog. Till we meet next, this is me Harpreet Kaur taking leave of you. Namaskar.